Minecraft map and computers. This is episode I1, where we will cover redstone basics. But before we can do that, we need to create a custom world. So follow along from the Minecraft opening screen. Click on single player. Click on create new world. Let's give our name of the world to be circuit world. We're going to change the game mode to creative. Difficulty will be peaceful. Allow uh, cheat should be on. Let's click on game rules. Inside of game rules, we want to make sure we turn off all damage. So drowning, fall, and fire should all be off. Disable raids should be on. Allow destructive mob actions. There shouldn't be any mobs, but we're going to say off anyway. Spawning. Don't spawn phantoms. No spawning mobs or villagers or pillagers or wandering traders. We don't want any of those problems in our world. The last thing, advanced time of day, off. Update fire off. Update weather. And then we are done at this point. We can actually turn off probably announce advancements here. Makes sense too. And then say done. Now, under more world options, the first thing we want to do is turn off generate structures, change the world type to customize, and it's showing you the world that it's going to build. Right now, it's the super flat customization. I'll go back and show that again. It automatically does it when you, when you do this. Okay, it goes to world super flat and then customize. All right, so it's showing you that we have a grass block, we're going to have two dirt blocks, and then a bedrock. We want to change this, so click on presets. It shows you right up here the formula for that. It is Minecraft bedrock, that's the bottom. Two layers, that's two times Minecraft dirt. Another layer of Minecraft grass, and then we have the planes. We're going to delete all of this up to here. We're going to give ourselves 14 layers of Minecraft white concrete and that's it so it should say minecraft colon bedrock comma 14 times minecraft white concrete and then we say use preset shows you that's exactly what we have done and create new world now why it's doing that let me tell you about this lesson we're going to focus on redstone basics and even though you think you might know redstone well i suggest you go through this because in case there is something you don't know it's a good chance to learn it. Redstone has some tricks uh, that not everyone knows and, and we'll be using redstone to build circuits. Not, not the normal sort of things you do, opening doors and things like that. So there's some subtle differences that you might need to know and you'll learn this by doing this lesson. All right, here we are, you can see our world. I don't use the Minecraft default look as you can see. So here we are in a perfectly flat white world. The first thing that I want to do is change the time, and I don't want the sun to be this low to the ground. And to do that, we bring up the chat window with the slash key, and then type time, set, and let's go for 1200 ticks. There you go. It's higher up. You can see that our shadow's here. And then I like to start facing south, so I'm going to put the, the sun to my west. The other thing you can do is obviously hit F3. And you will see that it says towards the left side of the screen, about halfway down, it tells you the direction you're facing. So I'm going to move that. You can see that it'll change to west. And here we're back to south. Okay. That's south. And that we're here, the last thing we need to do is get some inventory items. Those are going to be redstone dust, redstone torch. Redstone block, redstone lamp here, redstone repeater. We're also going to need a button, which I'm going to pick the stone button, a lever, and then a block of a different color, which I go with the green terracotta, which is right here. And 
and finally white concrete so I can fill in any holes that I make, which is right here. First thing we're going to talk about is transmission and latency, so I'm going to do a little bit of building and I'll be right back with you. Okay, we're back. And so all I built was a simple structure, which is a wall with a door in it. I've attached a lever, a button, and a pressure plate, which this is probably something we've all done in Minecraft. I can press the button, the door will open. It will close after a period of time. I can press the lever. Now the door stays open as long as the lever is open. When I click it again, it'll close. And of course, the third way to open it is stand on the pressure plate down here. As long as I'm standing under the door is open, now it's going to go through and then it closes. So these are the type of mechanisms that we often end up in Minecraft. But of course, there's several other ways we can do this. And one of those is I could simply run some wire to any of these. put down a power source. So that is transferring power from the redstone torch across the wire to this block. And the way the door reacts is that any block that it is touching is powered, it opens. So let me take this away. I can do the same thing by putting some sort of power source up here, say as the button again. Okay, so any of these blocks. This one will not. Because it's not directly touching the door. But this is, this is how redstone works, and this is how transmission works. We can use these wires. Okay, so with that in mind, I'm going to do a little building. The first thing I'm going to put out is a redstone lamp. Now, under Minecraft default, the redstone lamp isn't very easy to see um, when it's lit. So you may want to find a resource pack that makes that a little bit clearer. So what I'm going to do here is simply put down a couple pieces of wire, and I'm going to lay down some of the different ways to light these up. I've got the lamp, the block, we'll go with the lever, and the button. So these are power sources on this side, and these are a target or a mechanism. And anything that can be activated by a redstone we consider a mechanism. That's the term we're going to use. So we have a redstone lamp that is a continuous power source. It constantly lights up the redstone wire, which goes to there. You've got a redstone block, which is similar to a torch. It's constant. You can see it's lighting up the wire, which is going to the light. A lever is going to be different, and it has an off state and an on state. When it's on, it powers the redstone for as long as it's on. You have to turn it off for it to go. Buttons are different. They power for a certain period of time, a number of ticks. In this case, a stone button is 10 ticks. So when I click this, I'll get power and it turns off automatically. So that's some of the different power sources that are available. Now one of the things that you'll find is if we start lying down some redstone wire, let me put down uh, a button here. Actually, I'm going to go, yeah, I like a button. And then we're going to go with redstone. I'm going to lay this redstone out. So let me just go forward here. I'm not really counting, but I'm going to get a good chunk of these. And then we'll put a light every so often along here. I think I'll uh, do it like this. And then to make sure that we can see them, put some redstone on top to connect them, and we're ready. When I come back to the button and I press it, you will see the now all of them light up. Now you're probably knowing why. Let me go ahead and replace this with a lever. Now levers, you see this redstone gets dimmer and dimmer as we go, and at some point it's dark and you don't get all the flashes above it. So that tells you that it's not active at this point. So redstone has a transmission level, and we can lay that out. I can tell you that it's 16, but if you want to, you can simply lay some blocks out along here and start counting them. If you start right here, there's one, Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, and sixteen blocks. That shows you the transmission of sixteen blocks away is all a single power source can go. So let me get rid of these and we'll talk about how we can fix that. 
I'm going to do it over here. I'm going to do something similar again. I'm going to stretch out some redstone dust to make a redstone wire. This time I'm just going to put a lamp at the end. And we'll go back. A bit of flying to speed it up. And put a button right there. And as you can see, it doesn't transmit as far. So it can be kind of hard to read. Uh, you say, well, I really want a button there, but I have to figure out how far it goes. I have to put a continuous power source or a lever. And then I can come here and see, okay, there it is. So in this case, I can just put a repeater there. You should be facing the direction you want the power to run. That will re-strengthen the signal. You see this is bright red and we're back to the light. But there's something I want to show you that makes building redstone easy, and that is a mod you can get or a resource pack called Redstone Reloaded. Let me install that and we'll be right back. Now with the Redstone Reloaded, you can see we get a completely different look to the redstone wiring. It actually shows you the strength of the signal from your power source at 16, and as you move down it, every single one decreases until you get to one. And what this does is when you are building a circuit, it shows you exactly where you need a repeater. So now I can just start laying down redstone. If I turn this on, you can see it's showing me where the power is. So when I get to the one, I only need to put down a repeater. I'm going to go ahead and lay this out. We're going to make this pretty long. I'm going to do a couple of these. There's four. Repeater. Another repeater to continue the signal. And finally, we're going to bring this out to a light out here so we can see it. All right, there we are. Uh, fly is going to pick up a little speed on the way back. And there you have the on and off. You can see there's a little bit of a delay. That's called latency. From the time that I actually press this switch, the time the light's up, or by the time that I press the off, or if it were a button, if it went off automatically, how long it takes. Now latency is going to be important because I'll show you in a quick little demonstration here. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to lay down some redstone, but I'm going to skip every so often. same distance out to another redstone lamp out here. And then on the way back, I'm going to put repeaters in those empty spaces. Like so. And uh, I doesn't really matter how many I'm putting for this demonstration. I just want there to be some repeaters. And we'll go back and the difference is I'm going to now take off the two levers. Just there. And I'm going to connect these two together with some redstone, like so. Bring that out to here, where I will put on, in this case, a button. Oh, I know. What a mystery. How did that piston get there? Ooh, the magic of video editing. Okay, here we go. The button. Press the button. Well, that can tell me that I have a, a problem, and the reason why is I put my button in the wrong spot. Let me put my button here. All right. There we go. Of course, the reason it happened is I had added a piece of redstone here, which made this distance greater than 16, so it did not transmit. So here we go. Pressing the button, you can see the one on the left lights up sooner than the one on the right. It both lights up and turns off. That is because the 
circuit on the left, this has the fewest number of repeaters. Every repeater adds some time. And that time that it adds is actually adjustable by here. There's one tick, two, three, and four. You can also see it on the side here what it's set for. So if I really amp these up, I'm just going to set some of these for four. I'll just do these two and that should do enough to make this pretty obvious. Alright. Oops, I reset it. There we go. Now you can see there's even a larger time difference because the left circuit is completely completed the cycle before it's even made it to the right. That's because all of these now have added a delay. But even on the lowest setting, as you saw before, with a single tick delay, the difference between the two is pretty obvious. So the lesson here is you want to use as few repeaters as possible to keep your circuit as fast as possible. And the other property of repeaters that we need to know are their ability to act as a diode or a one-way connection. So I'm going to build a quick little uh, circuit here that's going to be very simple. Put my light here. Put a button here. I press that button. That light comes on. I'm going to do a similar circuit on this side. of this. I'm going to put a lamp here. And then come to another button here. So this might be two parts of the circuit that are different. I've got a right side here that lights that lamp, and I've got a left side here that lights that lamp. And then maybe the last part of my circuit is I have a situation where I want a third lamp that actually comes on independently of either side. So let me wire it this way. So we'll say that maybe this is one logic circuit that says when I press this I want the right side and the center to come on and when I press this button I want the left side and the center to come on but not the right side. The problem is when I do do this you see all three come on and the reason why is because they're connected so it's got enough power in the circuit to pick it all the way over to here. I do the same thing, you'll see the same thing here. I get all three. Now what you can do is actually anywhere between these two, I'm gonna choose right here, I can put the repeater. Facing in the direction I want the power to flow. Okay, so power will go from the back of the repeater to the front, but it will not go from the front to the back. So now when I press this, you can see these two lights are powered because as the power comes up and over here, I don't have power here. I think I need to show one more thing. That can be a little bit deceiving. Let me put another block here. And there we go. So you can see it, it doesn't pass down. And to make this extremely obvious, I'll just do it like this. Okay, you can see that it gets powered all the way to this point if I press the right button, or this point if I press the left. And that is the one-way power, or in, in real electronics that's called the diode. So that's the other property that we can use for a repeater. From there we will move on to the concept of powered versus activated. And that introduces also strong and weak power. So let me show you right away. Let me put down a block here. A couple of pieces of redstone coming out of it. Like so. Now when I put a power source here, doesn't matter what it, what it is, you can see it goes to this block. I'll put a lamp on top. And you can see that, that block activates the mechanism. This is our mechanism, it's a redstone lamp. That's activated and you can see this block has power. But you also see that it doesn't 
transmit through the block. So this is what is known as weakly powered. This block is powered and it will power any blocks around it, like so. But it does not power redstone coming out of it. That can be changed fairly easily. Block here, we'll build the same structure over here. Redstone, two chunks of redstone. So I'll put a light here. We'll put our light on top. Actually, we'll do it this way. Put a button here. Or we'll just lamp to make it easy. As you can see, once again, it does not power anything beyond it. Now, there's two ways I can do this. I can put a repeater here. The repeater strongly powers this block, which means it's going to activate everything around it. All right, one other thing that we can do is build this one more time. It's going to be the exact same structure. We're going to put a lamp up here. Put a block, put a lamp here. And instead of putting the repeater, we'll go back to the weakly powered situation. I'll put my torch down. Now it's weak. I don't have a repeater. If I put a repeater here, pointing it in the direction I want the power to go, I can use a repeater or a comparator, which we'll talk about later. I can pull power from a weakly powered block. And as you can see, that lights up. So let's review this real quick. This is weakly powered. It doesn't power redstone coming out of the weekly powder block, although it activates anything by it. Here we have made it strong by putting the repeater in front of it. So this is a strongly powered block and it lights all mechanisms that you might have. So it would activate anything, including redstone wire. And then here we have a situation where we have it going weakly. So it's not activating the two side ones, but we've used a repeater to pull power out of the strong or the weakly into a, to a, another device. So those are the situations of strong versus weak power. Let's move on to talking about the differences between a torch and a block of redstone. Let me put down a lamp. And you can see that this automatically powers. Anything this redstone block touches will be powered, including what it's sitting on. Strongly or weakly, we shall see. And as you can see, it is weak because it's not transmitting beyond this. Of course, in a diagonal direction, it doesn't either. So this is a redstone block on the inside. I'll do the same thing with the torch now. First thing you notice is the torch does not light the redstone. But very much like the block, when we put redstone all the way around, it does light everything. And you can see that that is weak. This is not a strongly powered block. However, this one is. So the block above the torch is strongly powered. And it really doesn't matter. Let me put a block out here. We can put a torch on the side, of course. Like so. And we're going to get the same thing. You can see that strongly powered. demonstrate that we don't light the block up that it's on, you can see that it doesn't. It doesn't light the block that's touched. The difference between here is it does light all of us around it. So it's actually just like that torch that is in there. It weakly powers all the blocks around it. We can demonstrate that it's weak by putting a redstone here. But it strongly powers the one above it. 
So even though it's on the side, it, it operates just like the torch. And that is the main difference between a torch and a redstone block. I'll demonstrate one other later, but we have to do a little bit more building to get there. The other aspect of redstone in Minecraft, it is inversive by nature. So what that means is, I have a block here. I'm going to put a torch on it. This block is unpowered, so the torch burns. But if I power that block, you see the torch goes out. It inverts the signal. You do the same thing right here. So to show that, we will build a lead structure here. And you can see that because this block is here, I have no power if I take this away. Since this is off, this is no longer powered, this comes on. So it inverts. A power block inverts. How is that useful? And it's actually turns out to be extremely useful. It's the same thing on the top as you saw earlier, whether I put it on the top or the side. That means if I had a block up here, above that, we know it would normally be strongly powered. So I'll put a few more lamps on it. Take this away. And everything lights up because this is off, this becomes on, and that turns on, those are all lit. So that is the inverse nature. What that lets us do is some pretty interesting things. So give me a second here. I'm going to put down some blocks. Maybe three apart. They could be less. We'll go over here. We're going to put a torch on each side of these facing one of the other blocks. So that means we're going to go here, 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 and here. And I'm just going to connect everything up with the redstone. see that it's connected. They're turning on and off. I'll make that obvious by putting some lamps here. Now what that means if I drew something off of this like a lamp you can see it's an on and off. It's cycling on and off because the power is inverting. When this block becomes powered it turns this torch off which means this loses power, which means this becomes powered, which means this loses power, and so forth. So it's oscillating between this loop. If we put a device out here on the end, you can see it turns on and off. So that's, in a way, it's a clock. Now I'm going to take a little bit, I'm going to rebuild one here. Uh, that you, you see me build one, you don't want to watch me build another one. I'm going to build it bigger, so I'll be right back. Hang on. Okay, here's another one I built. The difference between it is this is longer. I'll come over to the side and show you. Now, these always have to have an odd number because an even number, the circuit won't change. But you can see I've added a whole nother set. So there's one, two, three more than we had before. Now, if we look at these two lights, this one right here and this one over there, you'll see they're blinking at different rates. The one on the left is faster because the circuit is smaller. What that means with something about activation is if we were activating a device such as a piston, I'm going to just go ahead and pull up a sticky piston here because I'm going to need it. Like this. There we go. I'm going to 
break this one a little bit, I'm going to put a redstone lamp right here and then reactivate it. I'm going to show the difference between a redstone lamp and a block. So as you can see, a piston just destroys the block. Excuse me, it destroys the lamp. If I put a block here on the other hand, a block can move with the piston. And that's an important difference. Because we can do something like this. Now I have a way to activate a device with a block. Okay. Now the only reason I used a repeater because that was high. I could also just run wire like this. And I got the same thing. One other property of redstone is we need to get, in this case, a piece of glass. Of glass there. Put a wire on it. You can see that the redstone is activated on the glass, but because it is a transparent block, it does not transmit. It acts like an insulator. If I had an opaque block here and a repeater here to make it strongly powered, or a repeater here to pull power from a weekly power block, I can get the same thing. What that lets us do is also fairly interesting. Sticky piston there. I could put a lever right on the back, but I'll illustrate this easier by doing this. Okay, let's just make it a lever. So because that's an opaque block, I can pull power from it. If I want to turn this device off without turning my clock off, look at this. The head of the piston is not conducting, it does not transmit power, so we end up with a situation where I have a way to turn a clock device on or off. Alright, that is it for today's lesson. We talked about inversion, created pulsars, differences between redstone blocks and redstone torches, strongly weakly powered along these. We talked about using repeaters as diodes here, so that we know we had one-way power. Here we talked about latency. Here I demonstrated redstone and why redstone reloaded, which I put a link down below, is so unique. And so that is it for our lesson I1. Thank you.